What's up guys, today's video is gonna be about setting up your Amazon Seller Central account step by step. So if you're in the USA, if you're in Canada, Europe, Australia, if you're on any of the approved countries list, this will work for you. Obviously one of the coolest things about Amazon FBA and Amazon.com is all you need is a laptop from anywhere around the world or you know, in most any countries, you can start selling and build an Amazon FBA business. Before we get started, I just wanna introduce myself to anybody new to this channel. My name's Cameron James, I'm a seven figure Amazon FBA seller. I quit engineering school about three years to do Amazon FBA. In my first year, we did $1.3 million in sales, which was a crazy, crazy journey and story. If you wanna learn everything new and exciting about Amazon FBA, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below with the little notifications bell. I've been doing this for three years, like I said, and I'm not going anywhere. I see this as my career for a very, very long time. So let's not waste any more of your time. Let's go step by step of how to set up a Seller Central account. All right, guys, so we're on Google right now. All you have to do is go ahead and type in Seller Central right here, and let's go to Amazon Seller Central. So this is where we sign up if we had an account already. What we're gonna do now is hit register now, and this is gonna take us to the sign up page. And we can see right here, we can go ahead and sign up and it's $39.99 a month plus selling fees, okay? So most likely you guys already heard there is a professional account and an individual account. So the professional account is $39.99 a month right here, plus selling fees, that's just like the referral fees and the FBA fees that Amazon takes regardless. So this is the account I actually recommend for most. The individual account is cheaper, it's just a dollar per product you sell, but if you plan on selling 40 products per month at least, obviously the $39.99 makes sense for you, and it actually unlocks Amazon PPC, which is uh, just Amazon advertising, and you're gonna wanna use this for your business. But if you guys wanted to set up your individual account, you'd scroll down here. They make it harder and harder to find each year. Uh, sign up to become an individual seller, you can click right here. But for this account, we're gonna go ahead and sign up using the $39.99 a month professional account. The good news is, guys, we can actually email Amazon and say we didn't sell anything for three or four months we paid for this. We can email them and say, hey, we haven't set up our product yet. Can you go ahead and refund us for the last four months we did not use the professional account. So there's no risk here besides the you know initial $40 a month. So after hitting sign up, it's gonna take you to this page, get started selling on Amazon. So if you have an Amazon Prime account already, you can actually just use that email and password. I don't suggest doing this. I suggest you create your own Amazon account using your business email if you have one. If not, just quickly go and make a Gmail with your business name or your potential business name. That way you guys can separate it. Once you grow and grow and grow, you're gonna get a ton of emails from you know customer inquiries and just updates with Amazon. So you wanna keep that separate. So let's hit create your Amazon account right down here. So here we're gonna put in my full name, right, Cameron James. Uh, we're gonna put in an email right here, and then we're gonna put our password in and re-enter password here, and then we'll go ahead and click Next. So once you hit Next, it's gonna ask you to verify your email. Just go to your email real quick and enter in the OTP. So once you do that, we're finally in. So this is where we're gonna start registering for our account. You can see Amazon saying that we need all this information before we proceed. So let's talk about each one real quick so we make sure we have the right documents and you know what we can replace it with and all that good stuff. So the first one, business and contact address. Okay, so this is your, your location, your address. So what you're gonna wanna use here if you have a business is your business address, of course. Now the next question you probably have is, Cameron, should I have a business or not when starting an Amazon account? I suggest you do have an LLC or a corporation depending on your country. There's gonna be better options for different countries. Here in the USA, an LLC is your best option. You can get one within a day. You can use a service and pay like 100 bucks, 150 bucks to get this set up real quick. Or you can actually just go to your state's treasurer page and set it up via that. It just takes a little longer. You gotta fill out all the forms, all that good stuff. So what I personally use here is a site called Wyoming registeredagent.net. So it's 50 bucks a year to get set up your own LLC in Wyoming. There's some cool perks about setting up a Wyoming LLC. They're not anything crazy. Uh, it can help with taxes, things like that. But you know, if it's easier for you, just get it done in your state. I just like this because I literally can do it within 15 minutes on my own. Get a unique address in Wyoming for my business and all that good stuff. I really like that. It forwards my mail there. So that's why I use it. It's just super convenient. But otherwise, get it set up in your state. Uh, it's the easiest for taxes, everything like that. But I just wanted to suggest something that I use personally. If you guys are from Canada, the UK, or wherever, a corporation is probably gonna be the best bet for you, especially Canada, I know that for sure. So make sure you guys look into that and set up the proper business entity there and have all that information like the address and all that good stuff. For anybody who can't set up a business yet or it's just not right for you, you're just not ready to take the dive, just go back to the individual plan that I showed earlier and go ahead through that process. It's a lot easier putting your personal information through there compared to here where we have to put our business information. 
Like I said before, I recommend it. It's not hard to set up an LLC, uh, but you know everybody's situation is different. Next one is mobile or telephone number. We should all have a telephone number or mobile, uh, so that's an easy layup for us there. Next is chargeable credit cards. So this one's actually very, very important. So if you have a business credit card, that's perfect. A personal credit card works as well, but you cannot use a debit card on this and Amazon will go ahead and suspend your account. They won't tell you why either, but you have to use a credit card. This is very, very important to make sure you don't get suspended for unnecessary reasons, okay? So make sure you have a chargeable credit card there. If not, take a step back, go get your credit card, either personal or set one up through the business, which is eventually what I do. You can always change it later. So say you start with a personal credit card, you can go ahead and get on file and change to your business credit card later. Next is identity details. So they're gonna ask for your driver's license or passport, either one works here. And you most likely will need a bank statement and or a utility bill. It just depends on the account, probably depends on the location. But once we get there, we're gonna talk about that more in depth. So here we're gonna go ahead and select business location. So for us, it'd be United States. Next is gonna pop up business type for us. It might be a little different depending on your location, but here we're gonna select privately owned a business if we have an LLC. Uh, if you guys are a sole proprietor, anything like that, no, I am an individual, is probably going to be best for you. Obviously, we're not a charity or a publicly listed company or a state-owned business, but make sure you guys do the research and make sure you put in the right category here. Uh, for LLC, it's gonna be privately owned business. Once you put that in here, it's gonna ask you for that business name. So for me, it's gonna be uh, Cameron James LLC. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on here. So on the next page, the first thing it's gonna ask us is company registration number. So this is different for uh, different types of businesses, different types of countries. For an LLC, it's an EIN. So we can actually, you know, I just Googled EIN and this is the first organic search that pops up. It is the irs.gov. This only really takes a day to get, not even if they're open. You should be able to get it in a couple hours. But all you do is apply online now, put in your LLC information and out pops an EIN, which is pretty much like a social security number for your LLC here in the States. So we go back here, I'll go ahead and put this back in here uh, when I get a chance, I'm obviously not gonna show that on video. The next part is jurisdiction of business. So you put your state in here, wherever it was formed. For me, it was in Wyoming, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll put in my uh, business address right here, which is also in Wyoming. Uh, that company that I used actually provides you with an address if you pay for an extra service. And then finally is put in your phone number right here with English, and then you'll go ahead and verify that through a text message or a call. They'll give you another one-time code to your phone to make sure that it is a real phone number. And then primary contact person, you'll just put in your real name right here. So once I enter my code, got everything approved there, this is the next page. So it's gonna ask you for your personal information. So first of all is country of citizenship. Uh, for me, it is United States. Country of birth is United States. Go ahead and put your date of birth here. Obviously, I'm not gonna put this in for uh, security and personal reasons. Next is proof of identity. You can use a passport or your driver's license. I'm gonna use driver's license uh, for this example, but go ahead and put in whatever you have there and date of expiry as well. And then country of issue. So mine is in United States. Next is residential address. So I put my business address here. So if I wanna put my residential, I'd go ahead and just hit add another address. You can add as many phone numbers as you want here. Uh, you know, my name's right here. Next, it's asking you, you know, are you the beneficial owner of the business or just a legal representative of the business? So we're gonna hit uh, owner right here, of course. I have added all the beneficial owners of this business. So if you have business partners, right here is where you hit yes. And then you're gonna go ahead and add the information in later. I own this business whole right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit no right here. And once we're all done, we're gonna go down here and click save. So next is gonna take us to marketplaces. Hopefully this is a perk for everybody, you know, Canadians, Australians, uh, you know, and Europeans. But here in the USA, they're giving me the option to set up all the way across North America. So I'll have access to selling in Mexico and Canada, uh, which is great. Again, not necessary, but it's a cool kind of perk once you're ready and once you're ready to take your Amazon business to the next step. Uh, same thing, I'll have access to Japan and the European countries with no extra information needed. Obviously check these boxes. It's not gonna hurt. You don't have to sell there right away, but might as well have it all set up and ready to go once you get to that point in your business. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. So the next up is billing. So ideally put in your business credit card here, but if you don't have one yet, that's okay. Put in your personal credit card and you can always change this information. Later, you gotta start from somewhere. As long as it's not a debit card, I repeat, as long as it's not a debit card, they will suspend your account and they will not tell you why. A debit card is the reason why. So once we're all good there, we'll go ahead and click next. So the next page is the store page. 
So what they want here is a store name for your business. The cool thing here is it doesn't have to be your business name. It could be whatever you want it to be. So what I usually put here is a very generic name that can cover a basis of all types of brands. That way you're not limited to just pets or you know sports, things like that. So you put like sports plus. Well, you're gonna have to stick with sports because your store name has the word sports in it or you know pets plus, things like that. Well, you're gonna stick with pets because it doesn't make sense for a pets brand to sell sporting goods. So put a generic name that you know kind of sounds cool or just that could be related to any brand you want. That way you guys don't limit yourself. I think you could change this very easily in your storefront anyway, so don't, don't stress out about this too much. Just put a placeholder and you can change it later. So for this one, let's put, you know, the cool guys shop. Something like that, right? It's gonna tell me if this is available or not. And if it's not, you just gotta change your name, obviously. Uh, do you have universal product codes for all your products? If you have an established business, say you have a brick and mortar, then you're probably gonna have UPCs already, so you can hit yes right here. But if you're just starting out, haven't got your product figured out yet, uh, then you're gonna hit no. Next, are you the manufacturer or brand owner for any of the products you want to sell on Amazon? So if you're a private label, yes, you're gonna hit yes here. Do you own a government registered trademark for the branded products you want to sell? No, if you had a product already that was already trademarked, then you hit yes here. You're gonna hit no right here if you're just starting out with private label, and then we're gonna hit next. So the last and final step is probably the most tricky and most important to get approved on time for your Amazon account. And that is the identity verification step. So it's got all of your information right here, obviously. And then you're gonna go ahead and upload this identity document, whether you chose passport or driver's license. You know, for the driver's license I picked is front side and back side. For passport, it's probably just uh, one PDF or one photo for you. Next is your, your address. Just verify all this information here uh, to make sure it's correct. Okay, where it gets tricky is additional documents, okay? So we have bank account statement we can choose for or credit card statement. So we can upload my bank statement for my business. So when you get an LLC, you can take all those documents to a local bank and get a business bank account set up. You can even do it online in some states and it's pretty easy to do. And make sure you do this in your own home country, right? Canada, UK, get your own bank there and make sure the document is in good condition. Make sure it's all visible. Make sure it's not in a foreign language. So if it's in a foreign language, they could decline it. So go ahead and get it translated to English if you can. You can hire a translator or hopefully your bank will provide it in English for you. Then update it there. So you can do bank account statement or credit card statement. Like I said, just whatever works best for you. Just make sure the document, you know, if you have a more established bank that's, you know, nationwide, use that one. You know, if you're using, uh, I don't know what, you know, is around the world, maybe Chase or Bank of America, things like that are big in the USA. Maybe they're big around the world. Try to use those banks. Don't try to use your small little credit union or things that would be less likely to get accepted nationwide. Same thing with your credit card, your Chase card, your Capital One, your Discover, everything like those, those big national brands, go ahead and use that one over your smaller credit card company. Then finally, make sure all your business address information and business name is correct. You don't wanna have you know one number off where it's gonna hold up the whole application process. And then finally, guys, we go ahead and hit submit. So a couple things to note after you hit the submit button is that they could decline or ask for more information. They do this with about one to 5% accounts anyway, so don't be shocked or upset if they do this to you. Just make sure you're following up in this email and give them all the documents they want with the most information possible. Try to tap into your lawyer's side when you're writing back to them. Be as detailed as possible, lay out all the information in step-by-step -step format. That way they don't have to second guess themselves and decline your application. Otherwise, it just could take a couple weeks to get approved. That's why it's important to go ahead and do this while you're doing product research or before you're doing product research to get this set up going just in case there's any hiccups at all. Usually there's not any hiccups, but if there is, don't panic guys. You know, Reach out to me in the YouTube comments down below and I'll help out as much as I can or whenever I can. Otherwise, it's just part of business. You're gonna have to get over these hurdles and putting on your problem solving cap. So that is it guys, I hope that helped you out. Follow this step by step, just make sure you're doing everything to the T to make sure you get approved as fast as possible. If you have any more questions or you need help with everything Amazon related, I have a step by step mentorship program. The link is down below. If you guys are looking for advanced help, learning everything I know about being a seven figure Amazon seller, this might be the right step for you. You'll literally get to learn everything I know about Amazon FBA, get all the resources I have, and talk to me personally. So great investment there if you're looking to scale your Amazon FBA business or get started the right way and save tons and tons of money and save a lot of time. Again, up to you, never no pressure. The link's down below, like I said before. And if you're not ready for that, just go check out all the YouTube videos I have on everything Amazon FBA. All right, guys, take it easy. We'll see you in the next one.